Hey, welcome to Matt's Garage. Today I wanted to talk about shop equipment and my five favorite pieces of shop equipment. I'm not really going to get into hand tools. I might do a separate video on that if this one at all is interesting to people. But given that this is my second restoration, hopefully the first one I'll complete, uh, I wanted to show you guys what works for me and what I find most useful. The first piece of equipment I want to talk about just because it's out in the open is a blast cabinet. This is a Harbor Freight blast cabinet. Um, I'm backing this up so you can see my foot pedal. So this is not your stock Harbor Freight blast cabinet. Uh, this is heavily modified with a kit from a company called the Tacoma Company, a local outfit, a local guy up here in Seattle. Not a sophisticated website. If you're interested in the kit after I show it to you, give the guy a call. No sponsorship here. I would just love it. So let me give you a tour of that kit. First thing you notice, it looks like aliens are making babies in there. And that's because uh, one of the very first things I did was put in two uh, outside floodlights. The Harbor Freight floodlight that comes with it, or light, is pathetic. It's a joke. When you have all that um, dust flying around, you need a lot of light. So um, that is like a critical upgrade if you're gonna use the Harbor Freight blast cabinet. The next is the gun that comes with the Tacoma Company kit. It is a serious sandblast gun. It's got a huge orifice um, and it feeds uh, two ways and I'll, I'll get into that once I close it. And I'll explain why I have these air hoses in here. Also, a sieve for small parts is a must. Uh, the rest of the interior is stock Harbor Freight. Well, no, that's not true, actually. I modified the grate. I basically took it out and cut a couple of rows off of it so it drops down further into the cabinet. It gives you a lot more room to work. I bought this blade style, um, I forget what these are called blade valve, blade, something blade, but um, basically it allows me to throttle my vacuum. You'll notice on the Stock Harbor Freight, this side is where you attach the vacuum, but with the Tacoma Company kit, you reverse it. And the reason for that is your gun is blowing this way, right? There's the, the feeder tubes for the Tacoma Company kit. And I think the Harbor Freight gun is also on that side. So your gun blows this way. And if your vacuum is on this side, then you're just going to be vacuuming all the dust, right? And good media. So by having the vent on that side and the vacuum on this side, then you're blowing towards there. The vent is pushing the dust back into the blast cabinet so you're not just blowing crap into your vacuum or out the side of your blast cabinet. Uh, this is how I wired my uh, two lights. And then I put together, uh, I took a, a adapter for just a regular um, two inch hose, like for a shop back, and then uh, screwed it on there. So I just attached those hoses that you saw inside to that. And those hoses go to that, which is a bucket with a dust deputy on top. Uh, the, the vacuum hose goes on top. The hose from the blast cabinet goes on the side. And that creates a vortex inside that takes the dust and drops it into the bucket instead of sucking it into your vacuum and clogging up your filters and filling up your bag. It gets full after many, many hours of use. And then it's really, it's like the fines that are airborne that don't, that are able to get sucked up. Very, very useful, like key for this application. If you don't do that, then your fines just keep getting recycled in your media. So you, it, it's just like impossible to see. So that dust deputy really helps out. I don't re remember how I did this mod, but basically I closed in the top of this to make it into, I think it was a fresh air vent, and I closed the top and turned that into the vacuum side that connects to that uh, fitting I was talking about. Uh, the other thing I did was I put nut certs in under here. Uh, and what that does is it allows me to take the screws off and the glass stays in place, otherwise the glass tends to slide off. So I put nut certs in there with, uh, I think these are 10 by 24 screws all around. And then instead of that plastic garbage that Harbor Freight does, I just put, um, I go to uh, my local McClendon's hardware store and I buy a piece of glass, a thin piece of glass, pre-cut. They have the size there. And actually I'm due for um, a change. You can see this gets smoked. The plastic, will, the static from the plastic makes everything stick to it. The glass is much more forgiving in terms of the junk 
sticking on it with static. Uh, but then it gets everything gets cloudy after a while, so I just go buy a new piece of glass. So there's two panes here: the thick one that came with the Harbor Freight kit, and then the thin one underneath from the hardware store. Also cracked it. You can see so um, having that second piece of glass underneath takes the brunt of any you know mistakes. And then with the Tacoma Company kit, you get a regulator and a foot pedal, and then that's the valve. Okay, and it's actually just basically a carburetor. You you move the, this plug. You move that blue plug up and down, and that is the venturi and, and meters the air. And then it's got a nice, um, just like a PVC plug underneath, so you can just easily dump out your media. Just to be clear, I'm not claiming to be original. There's lots of videos on the Tacoma Company kit. I'm just sharing, you know, my perspective on it and, and why I think it's good. Um, and, and why, okay, so why is it one of my favorite pieces of equipment? Well. You can do things with a sandblast cabinet you cannot replicate with any other method in the shop. Let me show you some parts I just sandblasted. So those are my uh, serpentine brackets, and that's my scout heater in parts. And then you can see those valve covers. I did those by hand. You can tell they're shiny, and it looks good. But if you get in real close, the, you know I still have to get in all these nooks and crannies by hand, and it's got this sort of uh, polished look to it. This is rougher. It's called white metal, and it really lets the paint grab onto that, whereas this I would still need to scuff, and this I would just pre-prep and then paint. This I still need to scuff in order to really paint it. So don't get me wrong, I mean, you can do a lot of stuff by hand, but you can't get into the nooks and crannies the way you can with a sandblaster, and the end product is just a million times better. So Harbor Freight Sandblaster, heavily modified with the T Tacoma Company kit. Now for equipment number two, and it's related. My Harbor Freight air compressor. This is the big boy. Occasionally it goes on sale for $750. I think it's $799 normally. Haven't seen it on sale lately. Luckily I already have one. But um, it's a two-stage compressor, uh, and it is a beast. Now this also I have heavily modified. Let me show you how. Um, I basically bought a transmission cooler that I have hanging back there and I got rid of the line that originally went from there I don't even remember that was a line that was on there <laughs> I don't let me think about this forget it. it doesn't matter the point is what I do now is I take the line from the air compressor and I bought some copper tubing and I run that into that transmission cooler it comes out the transmission cooler and then over to these two black pipes, which are basically just an upside down U, okay? So it comes in at the bottom of one over there and comes out the other. And those are drip legs. So, you know, after a few hours of use, I drain those and a fair amount of water comes out. So that's my first water separator. Then it comes up through my second water separator and then into the tank. And then from the tank, uh, you know, there's my main valve. It goes into another set of water and oil separators. Those things are like always dry because between the water separator and me adding this easy, this easy drain so I can easily reach it. That pretty much keeps that air compressor dry. Um, it is the cheapest two-stage air compressor you can buy. And it's not as good as the amazing ones from Ingersoll Rand, but it's less than half the price. So uh, it's 220, so I had to wire up 224 and call out L&I, which is the uh, inspection body out here in Washington, to sign off on my, my uh, panel or whatever, but runs all my tools. The air compressor, the die grinder, and a few other things I use, they just, they just burn through air so that air compressor keeps up painting it's it's beautiful really consistent air and then i've got it plumbed you can kind of see some blue um tubes on the wall there it's a, i think it's called the master air or something just google air you know shop air distribution or shop air hoses or whatever and the, you know that that kit kind of snaps together it's it's been really great and I have it hooked up to a hose reel that's above the camera. So that's my air system 
key piece of shop equipment, definitely a labor saver. Third piece of equipment that I find to be indispensable in the shop. There she is. I love this welder. It's a Hobart Iron Man 230. No LED, no controls, it's got two knobs. That welder is a beast, 60% duty cycle. I use it all day, never overheats. You know, it, it, it does heavy stuff beautifully. It does light stuff beautifully. I use 030 gauge. It comes ready for 035, but um, I found the 023 on that welder doesn't really work because it's so fine that it just bird's nests. So it doesn't do that well, but for the 030, hardly ever bird's nest. I think twice in three 10 pound spools have I bird's nested the 030. And um, yeah, I love it. I mean, I can't. I can't rave enough about that Hobart Ironman 230. It is a 50 amp, 220 volt, so I did have to do the wiring in my shop. I did that myself and got LNI to sign off on that. Highly dangerous, don't recommend it. Almost electrocuted myself. Anyway, where was I? So, guys, you will be tempted by those prices at those stores. Some That store, which I've discussed a lot today, maybe on Amazon, don't buy the cheap stuff buy a name brown welder. I don't care if it's Hobart, Miller, Lincoln. I don't know anything about the ESOBs, but I think those are pretty name brand, but don't go cheap on your welder. Like you're gonna spend how many hours and how many thousands of dollars on your restoration? Like your welder is not where you wanna cut corners and plus you, I'll have that for the rest of my life. Hopefully that's a long time. I say that like that's gonna be a long time, but I don't know that, I'm just hoping it is. All right, piece of equipment number four. The Harbor Freight 20 ton shop press. Now, I have modified this by adding a jack or a winch to the top. And this winch allows me to uh, lift, lift the uh, crossbar here without having to do any weightlifting or gymnastics. So that is key. Uh, first thing I did was I went and I bought some one inch bar and use that instead of the uh, arbors that come with it because those are cast and they will shatter. But I do use, what do I use? Oh, uh, I drill these out so that I can run the bolts through them that come with the Harbor Freight bearing puller that, that's down there and then I can actually hang, I have another episode on this, but hang the bearing puller down there to pull bearings on carriers, which is key. And then I made out of angle this I just took angle here, two pieces of smaller angle here, another angle and a flat bar on top, and then some tubing on top, and I made this press brake. I use this all the time. It's a decent length, and uh, you can turn it in, you know, I'll move the arbors here, and I can turn it in any direction if I've got a long piece I need to put through there. It is fantastic. I also welded a tray on the bottom with some casters. Obviously, this is where I keep, like, my blocks and stuff, but there's a tray under there somewhere. So that is awesome. That press, you use it constantly if you're doing a restoration. I use it to reshape metal, press on bearings, a bend, basically put a tremendous amount of force into things. So, I mean, it is so versatile. Once you understand what you can do and what you can't do safely, you know, it just becomes a great tool. Uh, you know, I use it obviously on my knuckles for the uh, Dana 44 front knuckles. And uh, again, just one of those things, I don't know how I would do any restoration without that press and those modifications specifically. Okay, so that was four, four pieces of equipment, all of which I bought and modified um, somehow, except the welder really, all I did was a ground clamp. But three of them I bought and modified. One of them is pretty much how it came. And the other thing, I made. You're watching a glass of bullet on my homemade workbench. This thing is money, okay? I My only regrets are I wish I'd done a quarter inch on the top. It's 3 16 which is a little light, but I've got my outlets over here. I've got my air tools hanging over here. I've got my six inch vise over here. I've got all my wrenches hanging. Uh, each animal represents a member of my family. I've got, uh, you know, my K-bar, I've got my, my impact wrench, all my disorganized stuff, 
and you know I got my saws all up here and then this this is how I film guys I got a light up there and a boom arm here and this is what my camera attaches to originally I had that sort of table there over that my hood is sitting on you know it's one of those cheapo tables with the MDF top I put a wood, wood top on it and a wood underneath on the lower shelf like a thicker plywood and that was great but it cannot compare to a steel bench I mean this thing is the most important piece of equipment in my shop like I do all my work at it I use it to bend I use it to break metal I use it I weld on it. I just put my grounding clamp on there and I can weld um, it's it's really incredible and the, you know one thing that is is interesting is this 3 16 plate that I bought I don't know what kind of steel this is it's like unobtainium it's so hard I, I've used it to plate other stuff and it drives me crazy because just getting the mill scale off is like forget about it and then it chews up blades it chews up grinding discs it's like really hard stuff uh, and I didn't take the mill scale off of it and actually that's been great because it doesn't rust like so and I nothing I do takes the mill scale off if I drop some acid on there maybe it'll start eating it but anyway that's a detail doesn't matter so quick review the sandblast cabinet the welder the air compressor the shop press 20 ton and a good metal bench those are my five key pieces of shop equipment that I need for my restorations and would not live without. I wouldn't even do the work if I didn't have any one of those pieces, honestly. Like it, it would just result in so many man hours being burned on wasted energy. I hope this was interesting. Like I don't, and a lot of people do tool videos. I, I'm not trying to jump on that bandwagon. I was honestly just trying to share how I work uh, with you guys. Uh, if you like this, like, comment. Is there anything else about my shop that you want to see? Do you want to see like my five favorite hand tools? Do you want to see my least favorite tools? A lot of guys do those videos, but um, I would be doing it. You know, I'm obviously not sponsored. Um, it's just from, from the heart. So see you next time on Matt's Garage.